Sam, did we lose anybody, gain anybody? Same crowd? Okay. Is a Don't Tread on Me still there? Don't Tread on Me still there? Okay, maybe we'll come back. Okay. Um, Olivia. We don't usually get visitors here, but we're going to hand out our little visitor box. <laughs> That way, in case you never come back, it's still in there for you to read at and for LD to preach to you about. <laughs> there you go, LD. There's enough stuff there to last you for quite a while. Okay. Let's go to Matthew. Let's keep going here. I didn't write this down, so if this is number, this is part four, then this must be part five of the Sermon on the Mount, although it really isn't. We're not going to talk about that that much. It's verse 11, Matthew 5, verse 11. Notice that 5, uh, 10 and 11 have something to do, they have, have the same, whoops, have the same thing in common here. And that's about persecution. Verse 10, blessed are they which are the which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We went over that in Sunday school that we show that the kingdom of heaven is not our concern today. That was a concern during the times of the Jews. That's earthly kingdom. That's the ground level stuff. We see that in verse 9 that it has everything to do with making peace. Peacemakers. Okay, they need to be peacemakers in this kingdom of heaven. On this earth, they need to be peacemaking people. So Christians are coming across to the fact that they need to be peacekeeping people, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't earn your way to heaven. It doesn't get you God's physical blessings because you're a peacekeeper, uh, and you're going to be persecuted for righteousness' sake, but as they persecute you, keep the peace, don't, don't do anything about it, turn the other cheek, all this kind of stuff which we talked about there last week. Um, you know, it says in verse 25, agree with thine adversary. 
Just agree with them to keep peace. That's what these Christians, that's what they had to do. It shouldn't say Christians. They weren't called Christians yet. That's what they had to do. Follow Jesus. You don't get into the rock the boat stuff. Even though they were persecuted because to follow Jesus got them persecuted because of what he taught. What was it that he taught? That he was the son of God. They got mad at him because he was the son of God. They didn't seem to be all that impressed that he turned all these miracles in. I mean, that, that, that was exciting to them, but they didn't stay with him very long. But what made them mad was the fact that he said he was the son of God. They just believe that, then they're going to be persecuted. But in the meantime, keep the peace. And uh, now look at verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So we looked at the thing this morning in Sunday school about why do we do what we do? For whose sake? For God's sake? For Christ's sake? For your sake? For my sake? For, for the gospel's sake? For the people's sake? Why do we do what we do? Uh, do we, why, why did they do what they did? Why does Paul do what he did? And uh, are what we're doing today for God's sake? Is it for his glory? If it's not, it's for ours, and that's wrong. But we see here in verse 11, it seems hard to go against this verse because you will be reviled. And you will be persecuted. You will have some suffering. And there are people who will say, they will, they will say everything they can think of against you. Now, an interesting sidelight here is when that takes place, most of the time today, Paul warns about these are the people that are Christians, that say they're Christians, that will revile you, and they will persecute you, and they will say all manner of evil against you falsely if you preach Paul and risen Savior. If you say that we should, be, we should be following Paul as he follows the risen Savior, then you will be persecuted, you will be lied about, you will be uh, reviled. But there's more and more modern Christianity today that is not bringing reviling, it's not bringing persecution, it's not bringing anybody saying against anything evil. They're all joined into the world. They're trying to have favor with all the people. And if you have favor with all the people, you are not going to have favor with God. That's just, a script. That's just not going to happen. That was what they were supposed to do during those days again. So if, if your desire is to not have the trouble that comes with preaching Paul and uh, Tushi King James Bible Church of Tushi or me or what I preach and teach here or what you're trying to teach your kids but you don't want to scare them away and you don't want to hurt your relatives, you don't, that, all that stuff that's going on, if you don't want the trouble that comes with Paul, then you're, coming to the, you're going to the wrong place because there's churches all over this county that'll teach that stuff that'll make you happy. I mean, they're, they're, just, they're just a dime a dozen. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And this thing, even though it's about this verse 10 and 11, these verses 10 and 11, about being persecuted and suffering, let's see what it is that Paul says about persecution and suffering. That's what we're kind of doing this morning. And if it all goes well, I got something totally different by tonight, but uh, we'll see. Here we go. Boy, a four-minute introduction. That's pretty good, Jimmy. I haven't done that for a long time. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. You know the verse? We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, and the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body, for which we live are always, always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Now, I want to make the comment about we are troubled on every side. But I was thinking as I read that thing, that if you're not troubled on every side today, it's because you are not bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. See, the Great Commission is about the dying of the Lord Jesus and the Gospels. Paul is about the life of Jesus that we're to make manifest in our body. And if we're not having trouble, if we're not troubled on every side today, then we're not doing what we should be doing. Now, are we doing this to be troubled? No. Um, 
people will say the government's always had problems with corruption and stuff. Yes, but they've never talked about world order like they're talking about it today. This has never been talked like it is today. I mean, they're putting guys in the government that are foreigners, really, that are against the American way. They're talking all the time about global currency. I had somebody send me something yesterday that says we are in the new world order. Uh, it's just that they're still having to make it, make it, well, no, we're not, because if we will be, we won't be here. I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that a Bible-believing, saved, true saved Christian will not be in the tribulation. There's no doubt about my scripture on that at all. So we're not in the new order yet. But it is as obvious as anything that that's where we're going to be any day, really. So that's troubling. It really is troubling to me. I just don't, that was supposed to be, my, that was supposed to be your problem, Sam and Austin, Olivia and Caitlin. That wasn't supposed to be our problem. We figured you could handle it better. But no, we're here for this thing. Um, I'm troubled by the apostasy that's going on in Christianity. I'm troubled by the apostasy that's going on in the country, in the world. We're going perverted. We're going, we're going cannibalistic. We're going uh, uncivilized. You know that Jesus Christ, you know that that King James Bible actually civilized the world? Until that Bible came along in these countries, they, they knew nothing about washing their hands. They knew nothing about clothes. They knew nothing about anything. That Bible has cleaned up this world, and as they get rid of this Bible, they go back to that lifestyle. And I don't like that. I'm troubled by that. I really am. I hear pastors preaching about apostasy, and yet they're doing everything they can to get to grow. Now, if we're in apostasy because of truth, and you're growing, something's not right. And I'm bothered by the, I'm troubled, I am, I'm troubled by these pastors that are teaching what they're teaching to these people to get them to come to church. I mean, we could, we could change our method here. We could change our, our message here and get people to come here. That's not my goal. It's not my desire. It's to preach the truth and, the, and, and, and it's troubling that everybody else is not interested. I'm troubled with that. Of course I am. I get articles all the time. I maybe read you some tonight. Articles all the time. In fact, no, I should change that. There are articles now in the major media that are talking, of Christian, Christian articles, that are talking about Christians, it's your fault. Christians, you better get it together. You better make this thing fixed. We're Christians, this is our fault. Uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. You need to be praying. You need to get everybody to get together. You pray. We need to get this kingdom of heaven back to God. And that's not right. That's just not right. It's a lie. And I see these things. Now they're getting major publicity out there, and it's not true. I've said before, everybody's starting to understand the problem, but their solution is still wrong. I'm troubled by that. Um, I hear pastors all the time telling people to quit sinning and we'll fix America. No, stop sinning is not going to fix anything. It's a kingdom of heaven message. Christ taking care of sin, and then you living to please the risen Savior in a rightly divided Bible would fix this world. But we know it's not going to because of the world order and devil and antichrist. We, we know that. So am I troubled about apostasy? I'm not troubled about apostasy, I'm, which is a falling away. I'm troubled by what people are preaching to deal with it. Uh, look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. I am troubled by the fact that there are few men anymore that really want to get up and fight. That's troubling to me. Now remember, Paul says, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. I'm close to being distressed. <laughs> this stuff troubles me. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Looking at this last night, thinking, there's more in this than I've ever preached before here. There, uh, verse 1. <clears throat> verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. There's our strength is in, is in, is in his grace. Is that right? We're in chapter 2, Okay. And the things which thou hast heard of me, that's Paul, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And I'm troubled that, I, that there are not many men left in this country that are going to take what Paul teaches, a risen Christ, and take it to somebody else. I'm bothered by that. I'm troubled by that. But now look at it. Verse 3, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I don't think we want to endure hardness. 
gets better than that. Verse 4, no man that warreth, entangled, warreth what? With Paul's teachings, with what Paul wants us to say, what the risen Savior wants us to do, that, that's a war. It's a spiritual war, Ephesians chapter 6. And it says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. That's telling me that the reason men today don't want to get going on this Paul stuff is because they're entangled in the affairs of this life. I know we have to work. We have jobs. I'm not saying that. We are so caught up in that stuff that we are not able to fight what really needs to be fought. I'm troubled by this stuff. You can't do it. And if you're not caught up in the affairs of this life, your wife is, and so if you want to keep a happy wife and a happy family, then you are, you are as good as caught up in the affairs of this life. That's what's going on. I'm troubled by that. Now relax. I'm guilty. But I'm troubled by it. So the title of this sermon this morning, for those that like to do titles, is Are You Properly Troubled? I know we're all troubled. I mean, I can tell. We're all troubled. We ought to be troubled. We ought to, but there's, there's people out there in this world that are troubled by what's going on in this world. They know something's not right. There was a, there, you know, is it, was it Zimbabwe or one of those countries over there that they have, they have money, 200 million whatever they have for a piece of bread because inflation has just gone, it's just exploded. So you've got, you got to have gazillion monies to buy anything. Well, are we headed that way? Well, yeah, duh. <laughs> is he going to is is get to that point? People are troubled. They don't even know what to do about it anymore. If they, if they make any kind of a, a group effort, they'll be shot. <laughs> it's getting to that point. But see, that's kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God, it's a whole different war. And if we get caught up in this stuff, and we need to deal with it, but if we get caught up into it, entangled means you're involved and you're, in, you're entangled in it, then you can't fight for what Paul wants us to talk about. And you're not going to change your family. You're not going to change yourself. You're not going to tell anybody else about it. That's what an unfaithful man is. Because it says, commit out a faithful man who should be able to teach others also. That needs to be done. Now, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Here's another troubling thing. So yes, we're troubled on every side. Now we see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. And listen, as this, as this country falls apart, it's going to be harder and harder for a man to be able to deal with what he needs to deal with spiritually because we're going to be hanging by our threads trying to provide for the family. And shipping your wife out to the world and... And to make them blaspheme the word of God is not the solution. Anyway, but we're troubled by that stuff. And I know there's people that are working and you're in it, and that's, that's where we are today, God's grace, and that's what it is. That's our strength is God's grace. But now 2 Corinthians 7, 5, he says, For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. He was bothered. But we were troubled on every side. Now what's the problem? Well, without were fightings, within were fears. So it goes into this area, and what's going on? Man, there's, 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 there's fear within everybody, what's going on here, and there's, there's fightings out there, and we know all about that. We've got fear from within. We've got people that have left. We've got people that are quitting. We've got people that are passing rumors. We've got people that are angry, and we've got people that have been here before. We know what's going on out there towards us and the website and different people. I'm, we're considered a cult. Jason's out there, and, and uh, Clarence is out there, and... Fred and Sam and all these guys and people. I mean, it's just the weirdest thing. They talk about Paul with these people, and some of these pastors say, you're not listening to that church down there in Tushy, are you? Well, where'd they hear about that? Man, we are world famous. <laughs> we really are. I mean, this, this little place down here is, is world famous. Isn't that amazing? Now, either they love us or they hate us. Yeah. And, and Paul's troubled about that. I'm troubled about that too. These people are being lied to in their churches, and we got the authority of the Bible. Not any Baptist, we're not even a Baptist church. We're just a Bible believing church, rightly divided, just like that Bible says. And it tells us what the risen Savior has done. And it's more than just put a check mark by your name that says you're saved. No, he's, he's wiped out your sins, 
He has taken care of the law so there's no sin to be imputed, and he won't impute it. He gives us his clean record. Now, who's teaching that? But it's in here. And you can tell it's not stuff. To, they're tight. They're, here we go. I'm, I'm winging here. Here's what they're teaching everybody today in the churches. And here's what the risen Savior says they're to teach to us. Everything there is for us. History or future, tribulation. This is right here to us. You know what everybody's teaching? They're teaching all this, and they're ignoring this. That makes us a cult. That makes us liars. No, that makes the Bible a lie. Oh, wait a minute. There's 300 different Bibles out there now. Well, no wonder they don't believe this thing anymore. Their pastors have them reading Bibles that don't even say this. You get a message Bible, you got yourself a dirty book, a sexually dirty book. And that's put out by Rick Warren and all the, the, the biggest crowd right now that's out there in a group. They change every couple of years because they can't keep things going. And it, it's the Message Bible. Billy Graham's organization puts forth the Message Bible. It used to be a good news Bible for modern men. Now they support the Message Bible. That is, a, that is a pornographic piece of trash, let alone spiritual lies. But we got our own fightings and fears within our own church. We're sitting here this morning. There's people here this morning that are so concerned about stuff, their family, their friends, their, their, even their own self. I mean, is this really right? Can this guy possibly be right? No, this guy's not right. This is. If you're going to not read this thing, you're going to have fears. And Jason has come, these guys out there have come across the fact that they can tell people about Paul, and the guys get excited. Oh, I never heard that before, brother. That's pretty good. And he goes talk talks to his missionary friend. And his missionary friend goes, no, 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 no. This is what Jesus says. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, wow, that's neat. Yeah, Brother Jason. No, 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 no. This is what Paul preaches about the risen. You know what this guy's problem is? He's never read the thing himself. He's going from teacher to teacher to teacher, never reading the book himself. A faithful man will read his Bible, he'll rightly divide that thing, and he'll do with what God has told him to do. Not what the pastor says to do. What the Bible says to do, rightly divide it. And there, there's, there's problems with that stuff. We still, got, we still got Tobias out there talking to people in here. <laughs> what is this? I got the rest of the paragraph online for the website people, and not for you. <laughs> <clears throat> you want to hear it? <laughs> Uh, Tobias still has his friends here, and they actually still feel bad about them, like it's my fault or something. No, I, they just think I hate women. <laughs> no, just the loud, immodest, out-of-the-home, honorable, and devout, and in their own minds, women. I'm accused of pointing, aiming, and shooting with my preaching. Hey, if you see a, deer, if you see a, a skunk and a bunch of deer, what are you going to get your shotgun out? No, you get out your little scope thing, right, and you go for the skunk. <laughs> That's how you hunt. I, I learned that. I'm told I'm too long, too fast, too much to do in the sermons, whatever. That's on there too for everybody because now I don't feel so bad because what if they see that page? I'm in trouble. Let's go to Galatians 1.7. What else we got? What else are we troubled about? Well, we're troubled about um, on every side. There's everything. There's just nothing going right in this country. There's nothing going right hardly anywhere. Man, I mean, there's just nothing going right. You get, you get some kind of a sickness, and you've got to call the insurance company to see if you can get the pills or not. Like, what do they know? And they'll deny the pills to a lot of people. We know that story. No, I think you need to die. You don't need to die, but you need to die. You need to die, but suffering. And this is, this is nothing right. It's just amazing. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. Which is not another... Talking about the gospel here, but there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. So we're troubled because of the, the perverting of the gospel of Christ. We're troubled by that. So, so we have here reasons to be troubled. The world's falling apart, apostasy is everywhere, people are denying it. We got stuff going on within our own church that's disturbing. We got stuff going on outside the church that's disturbing. We got stuff outside the church trying to get in here that's disturbing. And we got stuff, believe it or not, that's in here trying to get out there that's disturbing. You know, it's just, it's just disturbing. It's troubling. And now we got this perverted gospel of Christ. 
Well, what do you mean by that? Well, he warns about philosophy and vain deceit. Traditions of men, rudiments of the world. That's called education. There's an education out there that will destroy your Bible. I'm not talking about worldly colleges. I'm talking about the Christian colleges. They will destroy your Bible. The world itself, well, we know that. They're not after Christ. We see that um, in Ephesians 4 that there's people that will walk in the vanity of their mind like a lost person. They know. They got, they've been to college. They've got, they got the degree. They've got life experience. They've got their brain. They've got the vanity of their mind. And we know what, what Paul says about that, Ephesians chapter 4. We got uh, 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 something that's not rightly divided is profane and vain babblings. So we, that's a perverted, these are perverted gospels. That's perverted. And that increases unto more ungodliness. That's troubling to me. That's troubling. Of course it's troubling to us. We have family and friends that are caught up in this stuff. Another, another perverted gospel is prosperity, money. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. We've got people here that are not happy unless they got some of this new stuff. I mean, you're just, you're miserable after about a month. You got to buy something. Now we, here we go again. Now we got this machine where you can play tennis in your own house. You know? Then you finally, you throw yourself across the living room because you went diving for the thing. And if you could ever watch yourself, you'd look just like a goon. An immodest goon, if it's the ladies doing it in front of their kids. What is it? Go out and play tennis. Do some, no wonder we're looking like we're looking. <laughs> but we got healthy wrists. Even my wrist is hurting lately. It's just it's amazing what's going on. Riches get us that stuff. I bet you someday, Jimmy, you can buy a video and put it in this, and then they call it a Wii machine right away. It's wrong. Just the Wii is wrong. And then it's made in China. And we're buying all this stuff from, oh, gosh, people were so stupid. But you could, I bet you get a program, you can have a forest fire on that thing. And you can have a little thing here that's like a pretend hose. <laughs> and you can do your own forest fires at home. <laughs> Probably have a shovel, okay? Shovel, <laughs> shovel, okay. And your recliner, you can do this, Jimmy. Isn't that a whole lot easier? Skip going to the club. You could probably get a club on this thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get all sorts of things to this thing. You know, you're just crazy. And you're going to pay money for this. Get out and do the real thing. We have, we have we Christianity. I got a Bible. Do you read it? No, I don't need to read it. God tells me. <laughs> Go on the street corner. You, you, you. Oh, that's just crazy. It's all fake. Okay, David had wee Christianity one time when he put his, he would put, uh, <laughs> remember the story? Put Scorby under his pillow and go to sleep at night listening to Scorby, reading his Bible. David, and at high speed yet, too. <laughs> In the beginning, God created David, what is this? Well, Dad, I thought if I listened to it, I could get a lot in, and I would just kind of go in and, yeah, right on through. Just amazing. That's wee Christianity. He invented wee Christianity. Oh, congratulations, David. Oh, anyway. Uh, Paul warns in 2 Timothy chapter 3, nine verses on this thing about modern Christianity. Form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. There's nothing there. We get into 2 Timothy 2.16, where again we got false teachings from wrong and prof uh, profane and vain babblings. We get into 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We get into the fact that the, that the scriptures are corrupted, the word of God is corrupted. We get into 1 Timothy chapter 4. He warns about seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Oh, man, it's troubling what's happening because they've taken the word of God away from people. Religion has become more important, yet it's, it's just worse than it's ever been. We're troubled by that stuff. Things are troubling. Now, if we don't want to be troubled, then we need to skip what's true. Get out there and play with the world, and we'll be fine. Look here at, uh, oh, we got here. Let's look here at, uh, so Timothy. Here, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Here we go. Here we go. You don't want your kids to suffer. Here, kids, go buy this and be happy with this and look like this and have everything. You don't want our kids to suffer. Not like us. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, sorry, verse 12. 
Now, I don't think Paul is starting off like it appears. Second chapter, second, second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Second Timothy 3, I'm going to choose. Second Timothy 3, 12. I don't, I don't think he's starting off with the word yay like we kind of think, think it would be. Yay! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's not happy about this. Yay! And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's the, now, we've come to realize that uh, godly does not mean long hair, short hair, all that kind of talk. Uh, you know, lipstick, no lipstick. Uh, that, that's not what he's talking about there. The teaching of true Christianity. Won't get into that. But he says, uh, you know, if, you, if you're going to do what Paul teaches you from the risen Savior, you're going to suffer persecution. You are. Yay, you will. Now, so what does Paul say about that? Jesus talked about that to his disciples and to his people. You know, and if you do, you can have the kingdom of heaven. We don't want the kingdom of heaven. And Paul, Paul never talks about kingdom of heaven, by the way. Never. In fact, kingdom of heaven is only in the book of Matthew. That's it. Gospels. Right there, it tells me something. Okay, so we're going to suffer persecution. Now, it's interesting. It might not have to be physical persecution, though. Well, if it's not a physical kingdom we're after, does it have to be physical persecution? Well, I never thought about that. Well, let's think about that. Let's go here to um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Now, let's just look at some quick verses about what Paul says about suffering, and that's all we'll do this morning. Um, if I made you mad, it's probably just me. Now it's going to be God again. I'm going to look at scriptures here. Troubled on every side, troubled within, troubled without, perverted gospel, crazy stuff all over the place. But we're going to be suffering because of truth. Is that what it is? First Thessalonians, uh, Second Thessalonians, chapter one, verse five. Talking again about some persecution here. He says it's a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Just a token. And here he says that, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. So if, if we're going to suffer properly, it's going to be for the kingdom of God, not for the kingdom of heaven. Because we're suffering for which means the kingdom of God. It's a spiritual kingdom. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. Second, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. For therefore, verse 10. <laughs> For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. Because we trust in the living God. Now, Paul's Paul's thing in Acts chapter 26, verse 18, is the fact that he will show us how to turn from the devil, turn from Satan, the darkness, turn to light, and turn into a living God. So, if we trust in the living God, which we say we do, and then you listen to what the living God has to say to you, to you specifically through Paul's teachings, and put that other verse together that if you uh, live the way Christ has taught us through Paul, then he says right here, you will labor and suffer reproach. I mean, that's, that's, that's a fact. And we don't want to. We really don't want to. I think, I, I, really, I think that most of our troubling, yeah, we're troubled that's going on out there. Sure, we're troubled with that stuff. And I am, I'm really troubled by that stuff. Um, I'm troubled by the stuff that's going on here, out there, in, out there, in here, in here, out there. I'm troubled by that. Yes, I am. I am bothered greatly by the perverted gospels and the things that are being taught in the churches and in the streets and in the homes, and I, I'm troubled by that. No doubt. But I really don't like to suffer reproach. And that's what's going to happen. Just because... I believe Paul to be our, our apostle. And he's going to teach me what the risen Savior taught to him to teach to me, to teach to you. And then you're going to teach it to somebody else. That's the trouble we're going to have. Now, anything else is just nothing. That's the trouble. Now, look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Because here's why. Uh, 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead. We believe that. Just about any Christian out there believes that. According to my gospel. That's Paul. When Paul says my gospel, he's talking about his gospel, his teachings. We learn about that from Paul. You don't learn about all the stuff that the risen Savior did in the Gospels. You learn that he died in the Gospels. You learn that he rose again in the Gospels. You learn that he went and talked to these people. and all, We learn that in the Gospels. You do not learn anything about the risen Savior, what he's done to us, to us, not just for us, but to us, except in Paul's teachings. That's my Gospel. That's Paul. And he said, let's read it again. Remember, Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Then he has the word, wherein I suffer trouble. He suffers trouble because he preaches that Jesus Christ died and rose again, and he's teaching what he's teaching to Paul to teach to us. This is why Paul is suffering that trouble. And it says, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. Now, come on, can you imagine me? I mean, come on, look at, look at me. <laughs> I'm teaching people that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. And I'm teaching that he was God and still is. He was God on this earth. He was God manifest in the flesh. And when he, when he was on this earth, he didn't sin. He did everything the way it was supposed to be done, and he was tempted. He fought the whole thing all the time. And he came back to see everybody to prove that he had died and rose again. I teach that. Well, we don't teach. No, I go beyond that. I will teach that he went to Paul and told Paul, listen, you Christian hater, persecutor, killer, I'm blinding you because I want you to do something for me. I want you to go out there and be the one apostle. I'm going to teach you everything I want you to teach to the Gentiles. And the Jews can learn it too, but right now I got them off on the shelf. And they can learn it if they want, but they're, they're blind. And all these Gentiles have to do is, is believe and trust, and I'll take care of them. Spiritually, of course. They may get cancer. They're going to have hard times. They're going to lose their jobs. They're going to live in this uh, crooked and perverted world. Well, while they're doing that, I'm going to fix them up. I'm going to take their soul and keep it away from their flesh. I'm going to go into them. I teach that. Isn't that weird? I, I teach that Jesus Christ says that uh, in Romans chapter 10, verse 4, I think it is, that he took care of the law. Now the law doesn't exist to say that that's wrong. And people go, oh, no, 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 that's weird. No, that's scripture. Yes, it's crazy. That's why you're not God. <laughs> we wouldn't do this. But he's got so much he loves you and us that he would do that. Then he says, and by the way, I will give you all my grace, but here's what I want you to try to do. I want you to try to learn to live this way now. Oh, by the way, you're going to get persecuted for it. You're going to suffer for it. And there's reasons why, which Paul tells us. We'll see some here in a couple of minutes. And that's what I teach. And that makes me an evildoer. That makes me a cult leader. That makes you cultic following a cult leader. He's got a gun in the pulpit. That's because there's people in this kingdom of heaven that don't like people that preach the kingdom of God, and they try to shoot them. I hope to shoot first. That's all. God won't God protect you? Yeah, he showed me how to get this gun. <laughs> you know, I mean, really. Why doesn't God keep the fires from burning? Well, he gave us firefighters. He also gave people that are perverted and weird going around lighting forest fires to burn down America, which is going to happen. You can't stop them all eventually. I mean, this is the world we live in. And Paul suffered as an evildoer because he taught that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to what Paul has to say. And he even says, I even, got in, I even went to jail over that thing. That I don't want. Not interested. But the word of God is not bound. That's what he says in that verse. Okay, so this suffering thing, this, this comes to the territory. It just does. Sorry. <laughs> How many of your family's thrilled about it? We don't move, do we? Because our family's not thrilled about it. We have not had a Kool-Aid party yet. <laughs> Haven't had many parties yet. I'm too excited about this stuff. Everything else is kingdom of heaven, whatever. Anybody got people in your family that don't buy this? I do. Do you? It hurt? It hurt. 
It hurts. But it's what we have to do. It's who we have to be. How many have some ladies doing some things that you can't stop them from doing? And that's, okay, got God's grace. How many men aren't being the men they need to be? Well, okay, we got God's grace. We can still learn. We've still got time. We've even still got freedom to do these things. We've got a guy out there that these, all these guys left to church, going to start their own church. And now this guy, one of them, is preaching Paul now. So now that crew is stirred. They're starting to get it. Not all of them. One of them's a musical family. And they're excited. But they haven't heard it all yet. <laughs> There's going to be some suffering there. I'm not going to like it. Why not? It's a spiritual thing. What do you think about it? You're troubled. Should it rob us of our joy? No. It kind of puts the stink on our happiness, though. Happiness makes our flesh. It's a fleshy thing. Our happiness, our flesh is not happy. But there ought to be a joy there. Yeah, what did Paul have? Tears. All the time. What did Paul tell us to do? Despise what's wrong? Destroy the magnificence of what people are being suckered into? And if we, if we just do that, we're troubled because there goes our people. There goes our family. There goes our friends. There goes everybody just about. We got grace, we got mercy, we got long suffering, we got patience, we got prayer, we got tears. Got to reprove, got to rebuke. If it really gets rough, get away from it all. If it really gets rough, ship them off to the world. That's what, that's what Paul teaches. We're going to suffer during that. We're not going to get away from suffering, persecution, and reproach. We're not going to get away from it. If you do, you're not doing what God would have you do. Now, let's look at a bunch of verses. Have we got time? We got time? I think we got time. I know we got time. Let's go here to uh, Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. I really believe the reason a lot of people don't want to do Paul is because Paul expects a change in your life. And Jesus doesn't really teach that in the Gospels, really. He doesn't really teach that. You've got to follow him. You've got to get rid of everything you've got and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's rough. But Paul tells us how to change our life. Who wants to do that? You legalist? Not at all. There's no legalism in Paul. What's spirit, of, spirit of liberty of Christ. There's no legalism. There's no bondage there whatsoever. Zero zilch. But there are some strings attached. But it doesn't affect your salvation. It doesn't even affect anything other than it's a testimony. All things are lawful. Do you know what that means? All things are lawful? Can you imagine what happened in the state of Washington if Governor uh, Guigle Gary up there said, hey, hey, all things are lawful. Get rid of the laws. Poosh. Man, I'll tell you what would happen. Chaos. What's happening in Christianity? Chaos. Because they think God just loves everybody. Everything is just fine hunky-dory. No, God's got some standards yet. God's got some teachings. It just doesn't affect your, your Christianity. We don't have to do these things to be saved. We don't have to repent and change our lives in order to get God. We get God, and you'll change. But that's where the reproach comes in, the suffering. Anyway. Philippians 1.29. <clears throat> For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ to believe on him. Yes. I'm happy about that. That is, don't we? We believe on him. Amen. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, this is King James. I forget. There's still stuff in here. Not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. That's, that's a fact. Well, we're suffering because of the economy. We're suffering because of the government regulations. You've probably got all the cow's history stuck in their ear now, right? Or some little chip. Have you had to do that yet? Not yet? Not that the cows have a whole lot of history, but they've got to put all the, it's comedy, all the stuff, you know, about it. I don't know much about that. Um, it's cost a lot of money to buy something. It costs, uh, you've got to get permission to do a lot of things now, and you've got to get a permit to do this, got to get a permit to do that. We're bothered by that stuff, something fierce. But to live for the risen Savior, following Paul, change your life, change how you dress. Men stand up and talk, women sit down and don't talk. I thought that would be a good one. 
you know, in a proper manner. You got your place. We all have our place. For God to put us in our place hurts. But that's okay. Look at um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. This one hurts just a little bit. He says in verse 8, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord. And then he says, For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. See, now we haven't done that yet. Listen, what have we lost by coming to this church and by believing what you believe and reading your Bible now that it suddenly makes sense? And we learn some things based on what we understand in the Bible, not by Baptist church teachings and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. What have we lost? Have we lost all things? We're hanging on, what, how, what, what's some kind of a phrase? <laughs> you know, we're hanging on like a, like a, like a, like a what? There we go. We're hanging on to this stuff. <laughs> Like a flea on his favorite dog. I wish I was from the south more than I am. Just south of South Dakota. This doesn't do it. But that's what we're, we're hanging on to stuff, and we're miserable. And we don't, Paul says, listen, I have suffered the loss of all things that do count them but dung. We'll stick with that word. Dung. That's what he thinks of this stuff that he's lost. I'm guilty. What is that, why is it he's losing it? Because of the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Do you know what people are learning out there? And right here, if you read this rightly divided Bible, you are learning the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. We had a religion before. Now we have found the living God. And we still have yet to have lost everything. Paul suffered the loss of all things. It doesn't matter to him. It's just a bunch of dung to him anyway. Let's look here at um, Philippians chapter 4, verse, verse 12. Philippians 4, 12. <clears throat> Philippians 4, I've got to move along. Right? Philippians 4, 12. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. There's that King James, by the way. You notice that? Abased and abound, all the word thing. That is marvelous stuff. Anyway, I know how to, be, how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Boy, we've, we've sort of been hungry. Nah, I don't remember ever being hungry. You, ever been, you were hungry back in those days, I bet you were hungry. Rough days. But we know how to be full. Oh, do we know how to be full. Both to abound and to suffer need. We, we, my family, we've had, we suffered need before, but nothing like ever we thought it was at the time, really. But we suffered, for, we're going to suffer for need here more and more and more. I don't believe we're going to go through the tribulation, but as it gets closer and closer, things are going to get rougher. But it says, Paul had to learn how to suffer, how to abound and to suffer need. Let's look at um, Romans eight seventeen. Isn't this fun? I mean, we're <laughs> we're learning that if we're going to be a Paul following, risen Savior following through Paul, rightly dividing the King James Bible type of a Christian, we're gonna we're gonna be considered a cult. Oh, we already are. We're gonna lose our friends. Oh, we already have. We're going to lose our family. Oh, already have. We're going to struggle with this world because we know it's, we're going to know what's going on because of this Bible more and more and more, and they're not going to care. That's going to be frustrating. It's, it's terrible. Isn't this exciting? This is exciting. He says in Romans 8, 17, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him. Oh, there's that if we suffer with Him thing again. I wonder if these new Bibles don't say that. Maybe I can find a different Bible that won't say that. That we can be all right. No, it says, If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. 
Listen, kids, if you want to have this kind of, if you want to have my kind of cooking, kids, you got to take the garbage out so we can put more junk in it that we, I'll, I'll make these kind of dinners, but you know, in order to enjoy them, we got to get rid of this junk. It's just the same thing. And you know, here's a, here's a bunny trail thought, official bunny trail thought. We're joint heirs with Christ, not joint heirs with Jews. See what I'm saying? We find ourselves, I hear, I hear these people talking all the time, well, you know, we're, we're, we're joint heirs, and so we get to share the inheritance and this kind of stuff. Yeah, with the Jews, yeah, that's true. But we're not joint heirs with the Jews. Ephesians chapter 2, sure, he puts us together. Yes, together to who? To him. He's not making us, a, we're, yes, we're a spiritual Jew. Romans chapter 4, Abraham is our father or such. Yeah, I understand all that. But we are joint heirs with Christ. He has to bring them to him too, as well as us to him. Does that make sense? Just kind of a quick, okay, bunny trail over with. We're joined as with Christ, not joined as with Jews. They got, to, they got to do some changing around too. That's what the tribulation is all about. Okay, anyway. I guess I say that because the, a lot of Seventh-day Adventists, for example, different people out there believe that, uh, okay, we're a spiritual Jew. They wish to do what the Jews do. <laughs> you ever heard that? So that's why we study the Gospels. We're a spiritual Jew. We should, teach, we should study what Jews were taught. <sighs> Crazy. But they've been taught there by their pastor who's got the degrees and the slobby suits and the nice cars and all this kind of stuff. Let's keep going here. Um, there's this many things I'm trying to just kind of decipher just a little bit here. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 9.12. There's one. Look at 1 Corinthians 9.12. 1 Corinthians, who's on there, Sam? Still the same crew? Okay. 1 Corinthians 9, 12. And there's context here, but let's just look at this one verse here. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? The power, power struggle thing. 1 Corinthians 9, 12. But then he says this. Nevertheless, we have not used this power. I mean, these guys had the power to do all... They had to have the power there over them, but they wouldn't do it. It says, they suffer all things. See, isn't that good? These guys could have done things in these people's lives by being the power in their life like everybody out there preaches, pastoral authority, all this kind of stuff. And they actually had it in them to do that. I mean, they had the spiritual power in them to do that, have that kind of power. But they said no. It says, they suffer all things. And if they didn't, what would happen? The gospel of Christ would be hindered. Oh, this one hurts. Listen, this verse hurts. We don't want to suffer. I believe in Paul, saying no in our homes, getting rid of junk that we shouldn't be watching because it's evil communication, corrupt good manners. <clears throat> you know what this thing is? That's evil communications too. All that kind of junk. Anyway. If we don't want to suffer like that, by saying no to stuff, putting clothes on, sipping our lips, men being the men they should be, Da, 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 all the long list. Then you're going to hinder the gospel of Christ. Is that what that says? Am I, am I privately interpreting something here? It says, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. If these guys would have used the power in them to not suffer, but teach suffering, you'll suffer, but we're not going to, but you will, let's hinder the gospel of Christ. So if we tell our children and our friends and our families that, oh, no, 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 we still, we still live a happy life. I mean, yes, oh, yes, we got, all the, we got all the stuff. You're hindering the gospel of Christ. That's the risen Savior. The things that we want to teach people about the risen Savior, we can hinder because we don't take the suffering that goes with it. I'm not looking for any special reason, LD. It's just that you're, you're the safe one to look at. <laughs> LD's getting a personal sermon here this morning because I don't know where else to look. <laughs> but listen, we need to suffer. Now, we don't need to go out and suffer on purpose to suffer. But if we just make the decisions that need to be made, even just a few of them, who's perfect, right? I mean, you're not looking for perfection. It's a nice desire. But as we grow, we need to grow and learn in this stuff. One of the things he says in Philippians, look, look at Philippians. Look at Philippians chapter 1. One of the things he says that we're supposed to be learning is... Approving things that are excellent. Chapter 1 of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. 10 and 11. 
Approve things that are excellent. We're supposed to abound. We're going to grow and learn more and more knowledge and in judgment. And when we learn something and we know it's not right and we do it anyway, we're hindering the gospel of Christ. Phew, that's a crummy verse. I don't want that verse in there any longer. I'll find a Bible that doesn't have that in there. Can't do that. This is what God says. So here we are, we got these people teaching that if you're not getting along with your wife and husband thing, then your prayers are hindered. You ever heard that? We, we talked about that. That's another gospel teaching. What does Paul say can hinder stuff? The fact that we don't want to suffer. It's going to suffer to get rid of this. It's going to suffer not to do this. We're going to suffer by da 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 da. This church suffers because we don't have the money coming in. I can't get Jason to send me the twenty-three thousand dollars. What a stingy, stingy man he is, you know. And we can't fix our our stove down there because we need twenty-three thousand dollars to fix that button on that thing. So, you know, that's stinginess to the max. So if he gets rid of that, no, we're going to suffer. We're suffering here because we don't have the big crowds coming in. The the. Uh, I had some tar on the front window of the van the other day. Where'd the tar come from? The roof. <laughs> Our roof is blowing away. <laughs> well, we're not going to fix this roof unless we have enough money. Jason, $23,000 would probably give us even a steel roof. But that's okay. No, our church is suffering because we preach Paul like we preach it. No, it's suffering because of you. No, it's not suffering because of me. Get off of that. Quit listening to people. It's suffering because it's not a doctrinal problem. Yes, it is. What Paul does and he tells us to do is doctrine. So, yeah, it's doctrinal problems. But we're suffering because we preach Paul here. When I leave, you can preach anybody you want. And you'll probably get more people. And it'll be because I left. No, it won't. It's because you quit preaching about Paul. If that happens. Let's keep going here. That's a big remark that. 1 Corinthians 9, 12. That maybe the reason people aren't getting what you're trying to teach them is because you're not suffering. Willing to do what has, has to do to, to say no to this stuff. That's a good one. That hurts. Well, let's here. Let's look at another one here. This isn't as fun either, but let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's look at another one here. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's uh, 53 minutes. We can uh, wrap this thing up in about an hour. More. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Okay, so don't think you're by yourself in this, by the way. All, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice. Well, if, if you knew, and I, I don't know how to do this, if you saw what was going on in some of the families out in our web family out there, you've got like a hundred or so that are reading stuff all the time, and uh, uh, the battles they're having, the rejoicings they're having, the challenges they're having, you would rejoice with them and you would suffer with them. John's starting a church next Monday and next Sunday. Uh, in uh, somewhere in Illinois, John McCord, they're starting a church based on this stuff. He wants to do something. I got I got to start a church. They're renting a little room in a hotel in a little motel thingy dingy there, and they're gonna they're gonna try it for a while. Well, you know what goes along with that? That's that's hard. That's a challenging thing. Get your kids watching you. All sorts of stuff there. Uh, you would rejoice, and if if it doesn't work, and they're hurt and they're you know upset, so will we be. We should be. We got one guy out there trying to get these other guys to get it, and there's a huge benefit that could come out of that if it all works. Huge benefit. So we rejoice with that. But they're suffering now. I mean, right away they got hit and hammered. Well, if we knew that, you would be feeling for them as well. So I, I know, I don't know how to tell you that. But there's things going on out there that makes what we're fighting here grade school. So don't think you've got the worst suffering situation. You think, you think it's rough with your husband and your kids and blah, 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 or your neighbors or your friends, your relatives. No, 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 no. What I know going on in our church family out there is we're nothing. We don't have anything to sweat out. Too much. We've got some hard cases here. It's hard stuff. But there's a lot going out there. So when he says um, when one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, we have some suffering going on out there that I don't know how to keep you up to date on all this stuff. But it, it's, it's, hard, it's hard out there. Some tough stuff. Let's look at some more here. Let's look here at um, 
What about that? Well, we know about that. And this, okay. Ooh, the website just heard that. We did that one already. It's just, just, just so many things. I don't want to get them all in here. Let's go here to, uh, let's go to first, second, first Thessalonians chapter 2. There we go. There's, there's another one. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Yep, this is a good one. I like this verse. Here we go. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi. So, so they've had some rough days, haven't they? I mean, they've been shamefully entreated. They'd suffered before. And then he says, you know, after that we had suffered before. He says, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. They had been shamed, they, they had suffered, they've had it rough, and what do they do? They're still bold. Doesn't mean they're loud, doesn't mean they're obnoxious, doesn't mean they're arrogant, it just says that they were bold to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Show people anyway. You ever feel like quitting? I have felt like it. Have you ever felt like quitting? I have felt like, do you care that I felt like quitting? I'm not quitting this stuff. I like preaching this stuff. I like teaching this stuff. What are my sufferings? Well, none of your business, but they're serious. What are your, what are your sufferings? Well, none of your business. Anybody else's business, but your suffering. But don't quit. After that, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated. Pastor, you just don't know how bad that shamefully entreated thing is. They won't talk to me anymore. And they're telling bad things about me. <laughs> you know, it's okay. Be bold. There's going to be contention. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse 4, for verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation. We told you, even as it came to pass, and ye know, you know it. We know what's going to happen if we, stick, we step our foot down on this stuff. We know we're going to run out of money someday. Why is that? Nobody's going to pay money to hear this stuff. Let's look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. You know, you know where this is headed. You know when apostasy is apostasy. It's not going to bounce back. You know America is not going to fix this thing. I mean, we voted for the guy and everybody still likes him. And if he goes, then this other guy's there. And if he goes, she's there. <laughs> There's no hope. Well, in four years, elect a new guy. I don't think we'll be here in 40 years, at least outside the jail, if we keep preaching what we're preaching. Some of you folks that die, that's totally unfair. I'm not, don't think I'll be happy if, you, if I get a phone call. Well, LD died last night. No, what's the deal with that? I, I got to go talk to him really quick. I will, I will, I will put your glasses crooked on your, on your body while you're laying there, LD. I'll do something that'll embarrass you. <laughs> You can't do that. Uh, Lewis, little leg pain. Come on, put up with it. You've got to hang in here with us. You have no idea what your amens meant to me at Vaughn's funeral, by the way. I mean, when you got the support there, we need that. So nobody go dying off on us for a while yet. Okay. Now watch me be the one that goes. <laughs> you know, I'm done. Oh, well. What are we doing? 2 Timothy 1.12? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Goldie. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Right? Okay. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. Oh, okay, good. For I know whom I believe. I got to do it the way we sing it. Now, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded <laughs> that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Isn't that the power of music, by the way? That shows what you can do with music. Anyway. I'm not ashamed. 
Still hurts though, doesn't it? Okay. Let me think. I think we. I think we pretty much. I think we got them all. For now, because I got more stuff tonight. That's I'm. I'm just itching for tonight here. We got that. We got that. We got that. We got one more here. Let's go here to Second uh, Thessalonians chapter one. Then we'll be done. Wow, really? For those out in the website world, you'd recognize that our numbers and our sermons are longer, but that's because we include the singing now. Sermons haven't changed any. We just include the singing on there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and we'll finish this right here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. This is what we need to be here as well. We need to be rested amongst all this stuff. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, so you who are troubled... Rest with us at Tushi Baptist, no, at, <laughs> at King James Bible Church of Tushi. Rest with us, because can you see we are in a rest mode? We're stressed. <laughs> We're troubled. We don't like what we see going on around us. We don't like what we see going on within us, without us, and we have our own sufferings within, within our own little circles. It's so hard. But this stuff is so right. And there is, there is such deception going on out in this country, in the, in the churches, in the pulpits, because they just don't write and divide this Bible. It's not teachings. It's what that Bible says. I want somebody to get this. I'm just, I'm just in a war mode for some folks to get this. I don't understand it all yet. I have not landed. Neither had Paul. Right? He's not yet attained, he said. But he remember, he says, but there's one thing I know. I'm going to forget about what's in the past, and I'm going to head for the future. Well, I got a few things I'm going to hang on to. I'm heading for the future. I got a few things I want to hang on to. I'm hanging on a lot of stuff, and that's why we're so miserable. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on them, Revelation 19, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's the risen Savior when he says Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe. That's us. Because he says in parentheses, because our testimony among you was believed. That's Paul teaching us Gentiles that that's what we believe. In that day, Wherefore, also, we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. See, there's part two of this. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior, yes, but we, now we need to live a life that's worthy of being one of his children. That's our challenge. That's where the suffering comes. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. Not ours, but his goodness and the work of faith with power. Not our faith, but his faith. What he would have us do, Galatians chapter 2, that's his faith that we're living on. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's the risen Savior again, may be glorified in you, not the earthly Jesus that we have to follow footsteps and try to imitate, that's not, that's not teachings today, but the risen Savior be glorified in you, and ye in him, even though we'll suffer because of that, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, if one for that grace, we wouldn't be doing very well. But we're trying we're trying. If we try, we're going to suffer. Those guys out in the world, on the, on the web family out there that are trying, they're suffering. So are we. But don't let it get you down. There you are. There's, what, there's their response to the Beatitudes about suffering, persecution. They suffered persecution to have what's down here. We're supposed to suffer persecution because of what we have up there in the spiritual world. Paul says in Ephesians that uh, Christ gives us spiritual blessings, not physical blessings. Can God give us physical blessings? Everybody always, somebody always asks me that when we're done. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that and some more stuff tonight. I hope you can come back tonight. Goldie, it's good to see you this morning. Good to see you. You too, LD. You're welcome. Okay, we'll stand, we'll dismiss here, and uh, there's no food down there, just to, let's go home. Maybe I should go down and wash some dishes, I suppose, make sure they're clean, now that I got y'all worried. 
My wife is embarrassed because uh, I thought we cleaned dishes down there pretty good. <laughs> uh, we do. Father, we thank you again for uh, what you've taught us this morning. We don't like the persecution thoughts or suffering, but uh, we sure can't say anything to you who, who went all through what you did for us to, to have you as our Savior. Help us learn that this Bible is the truth and uh, we can change our lives to please you and, and uh, be willing to take the hits and the suffering that comes with it when we try to do right within our own church family and our family families and our lives 